welcome. This is a moment of meditation on the Word of God. When we dig into the mystery of God's Word, and that will enhance us both in our work as Christians, in our watch, and in our prayer. We will want to look at the great mystery of godliness, the great mystery of godliness. We will take a look at various aspects of it as time will permit us. You are welcome to the Chapel of Grace, University of Medubri, Nigeria. The great mystery of godliness. Let us pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for what you have granted to us. Godliness. Revealed in mystery. Made manifest in your word. And Father, we are grateful that this great mystery revealed to us, manifested in your word, and even made living and alive in Christ Jesus. We pray as we meditate upon them, Lord, they will renew our mind. They will renew the spirit of our mind. They will regenerate us. They will reinvigorate us to triumph, in holiness and the knowledge of Christ, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray that God will give us understanding to grasp certain aspects of the mystery of God's word. The fundamentals of the Christian gospel mystery. You know, the gospel is a mystery. By mystery, we mean something that is hidden with God and you only know it if God unfolds it. A mystery can never be known except there is revelation. So whatever we know of mystery is what is revealed. And only God can unfold a mystery. That mystery that is true mystery, mystery of the truth that brings salvation, mystery of the truth that brings redemption, that brings regeneration, that brings reconciliation, the mystery of truth that brings revival, that mystery of the truth that brings restoration. Only God can unfold it. If God does not make it known, you can never know it. And that is the good thing about the gospel of Christ. The gospel is what God has revealed, not one what man has imagined. It is not what man has thought out. It is not born out of the, out of the culture of men. No, it's born out of the scripture of God. And so the mystery of godliness, they are scarcely understood because we, we come to them and we obfuscate it. We, we obscure it with our imaginations, with our thoughts, with all the high things that we think of ourselves and we think of other things. We, we come to it with query on how God is not very wise and how we have a better approach to the things of God. Whereas we are in chains and bondage and we can't even save ourselves. And then we are telling somebody, you know, who can save everything, how salvation should be. That is the height of unbelief, how height of rebellion and stiff nakedness, height of dull heartedness. You know, and and we we these things make it difficult for us to understand and appreciate what God has. And so many of us are teaching and propagating, practicing things that are contrary to the plain and the real meaning of God's gospel as they are made plain. It, it, you don't need to know too much in order to understand it. All you need, just pay attention. You see, faith comes by hearing. Faith does not come by imagination. It doesn't come by thinking. No. Faith comes by hearing hearkening to the word of God. You must pay attention, agree with what you hear, 
and grasp what you hear as you have heard it. That is it. It doesn't fit, it does not come from conceptions. It doesn't come from prejudices. It does not come from scruples. It doesn't come from, from pretenses. It doesn't come from cultures. No. Faith comes from God. It does not come from thoughts. It doesn't come from logic. It comes from the logos of God's word. And so we will just take simple, plain scriptural comparisons to understand how God first approached Israel through Moses and how God now used that approach to Moses, uh, to Israel through Moses, how God used that as what he called kindergarten. He called it the tutelage. He, he called it the pedagogy and how God used that pedagogy to bring us to the substance that's in Christ. And what's the difference, what's the improvement from the pedagogy to the postgraduate? That is, that's some of the things, that, those are some of the things we'll be considering today. First of all, we will consider that the ministry of Moses was a ministry of revelation. But the ministry of Jesus did not just come as ministry of revelation. It came as ministry of regeneration. And so it's not, it doesn't just reveal the truth to you, but it regenerates you with the truth. And that is wonderful. That is wonderful. The, the, the message of, of Moses, the law, had no power. It had no power. It doesn't have regenerative power. It doesn't have power of grace, power that empowers you and quickens you to life. It could not quicken to life. But the ministry of Jesus can quicken to life. It can kickstart what has engine knock. That is the, the ministry of Jesus. So Jesus came with, with a regenerative mystery. And that is wonderful. And what are the meanings of the law revealed through Moses? What is the difference between the meaning of the law revealed through Moses, which brought ordinances? Ordinances, what the law provided was to reveal some precepts of God and give you ordinances that will help you, uh, you, you know, approach God. Because the law knows you cannot keep the law, but it's good you know the law so that you understand that you cannot keep it and that whatever you are doing is not adequate, but then it provides a cleansing, a cleansing that is temporal, a cleansing that is not finished. It provides that cleansing so that with your realizing of your inadequacy, you will now take the cleansing to be able to approach the throne of grace. And that is what God gave in Moses. But in Jesus, God brought regeneration through grace and the power of truth, truth that purifies truth that cleanses. You see, purify them by your word. You see, the word I speak, they are spirit, they are life. And you are pure and purged because of the word I've spoken to you. And that's, 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 that's wonderful. These are plain sentences. There is nothing complicated about them. But somehow, because we come with a complicated mind, plain things, just elude us. And so the grace and truth that came from Jesus, you say the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. The difference between the law and the grace and truth is this extra regenerative power, extra quickening power. That is extra, the enabling power that grace and truth brings. That is what is there. Moses just has the truth of the law, but he did not have the grace that backs that truth. 
so that it becomes the gospel. And that's the thing that Jesus brought. In fact, in John chapter 1, verse 17, he says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now by the law, as we say, law means the, the promises for godliness and the penalties for ungodliness. If you are ungodly, this is what price you must pay so that your ungodliness will either be cleansed, the sacrifice you must make, so that your ungodliness will be cleansed or a penalty you must pay so as to compensate for that ungodliness. And many a time, when the matter becomes a deadly matter, the price you pay is death. So you just die and stop, stop, stop being ungodly. <laughs> you know, stop adding any more ungodliness. But many a time, it is, you bring an eye for an eye. You know, you bring a particular number of shekel for a particular offense, you make a particular restitution for a, a particular misdemeanor, you bring a particular sacrifice for the propitiation from a particular sin. You see, that's what the, the law provided. And so it, there is precept for godliness and there are, you know, penalties uh, for ungodliness. But when it came to Christ, Christ bore the penalty. Grace is that Christ bore the penalty. And not only that, he bore the penalty, he made it available that if you believe the truth, you will receive the grace. And so Christ brought propitiation for ungodliness by himself. It's not a penalty. You don't pay the penalty for it, but you receive the propitiation through faith. And then he gives you the power for godliness. Not just the precepts, not just the patterns, not just the, the promise, but he gives you the power for godliness by his spirit. The spirit of truth. And that is what Jesus has done. And I pray that as you listen to this message, you will receive the power for godliness. You will not just receive the propitiation for every ungodliness, but you receive power to overcome godliness and live godly life. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Now when we come to the ritual works of the law and the spiritual words of faith, you, you see that this is another way God graduated his people from the ritual works of the law to the spiritual words of faith. And many fail to notice that when St. Paul talks about works of the law, he was talking more about the ritual works of the law. And the ritual works of the law has to do with signs of the law and the ordinances of the law. The signs of the law which you bear in your body or you observe as a pattern or the ordinances of the law. And the ordinances of the, the signs of the law are like the circumcision, the sign of circumcision, and the sign of the Sabbath. And the ordinances of the law, they are like the sacraments of the gospel. The ordinances of the law, you know, they have to do with the ministrations that are ministered to you. And the people that minister ordinances are the priests. And they minister it upon you when you come before the priest. And these are the ritual works of the law. They are for your cleansing. They are for, you know, your blessing. You, you know, you, the, the priest will, will minister unto you. you take, he takes a sacrifice from you, an offering from you. Then he will offer that as a sacrifice and then he will sprinkle something or pronounce something or touch something on you. And then you receive an unfinished, a temporal 
an outward benefit from that ritual. But those things don't touch your conscience, they don't touch your spirit, they only, uh, they are just rites that are outward. And it is in grace that the inward one comes through Christ. Praise the Lord. And Paul was not, when Paul talks works of the Lord, these are the things, that's why he said, no priest, no minister will boast that it is by his anointing, by his preaching, by his power, by his spirit, by his anything, that he now ministered salvation new. No, not by any man's works, so nobody will boast. And he said also, not by the works we have done, and not by the works another person has done on us. Not the ones we have done for ourselves. And not the one somebody has ministered unto us. So, works of the law is not only moral works, but ministered ordinances. That is the one that people can say, well, it is by my baptism that you receive the Holy Spirit. It's by my power that you receive healing. It is by my ministration that you receive the asif. The person owns the spirit, owns the salvation, or owns anything. No, nobody can ever say it is him. It is by his anointing. You know, today people talk about, you stay under my cover. You know, under my ministry and my ministration. No, no. Not of any man's ministration. So nobody will boast. So these are some of the things that he keeps talking about the observations and the ministrations of the law. And of the 613 commandments that we can find in the Mosaic law, we can observe that there are priestly works, priestly works of ritual ceremonies, priestly works of ministrations that are performed by the priests. All priestly works of ministration have been taken over by Christ. Nobody ministers nothing in the New Testament. Every ministration is from God and is from Christ. Anybody that is praying for you is praying for you on behalf of Christ. Is praying for you in the name of Christ. Is praying for you according to the word of Christ. Nobody is doing anything by his power by his word? No. It is by the power of Christ, by the spirit of Christ, by the faith in Christ. Not by your own finger, but by the finger of Christ. Nobody claims anything. The only thing you need is faith. When you hear it, you believe him that is preached. And have confidence in him that is the doer of all things. So nobody is the mediator. Nobody is the advocate. Nobody is the propitiation. No. Nobody has power to do any ordinance. Anything you are doing, you are simply drawing people's attention to the Lord. And your power or your purity or your anointing or anything is not the issue. Once you start claiming that, you are blocking the truth of the gospel. Just make known to people. And I believe as you are knowing this, you will connect because you are son of God. Nobody is a grandson. You don't become son through another son so that you become grandson. No, everybody is born of God, not born of a minister. Everybody is saved by Christ, not saved by an apostle. No. Not saved by a bishop. No. Not saved by a pastor. No. You are saved by God, by Christ, through faith in him. Not faith in a minister. And this is very important. But in the law, ah, you see, your safety depends on the ministration of the minister. In fact, if you commit an offense in Israel, you can run to the city of refuge. Once that offense is under the ministry of a priest, you are free 
as long as you stay in the city of refuge. But when that priest dies, your cover collapses. You know, it's like you are saved under the ministry of a prophet, pastor, priest, or bishop. And then when the man dies, you've lost your salvation. No, God does. God used that as a kind of, you know, cardboard audiovisual to explain something to the people of Israel. But in Christ, he is offering the reality, not the simulation, but the real substance. And that is what is happening. So apart from the priestly works which Christ has taken over, there are personal works of moral values, moral responsibilities that individuals do, which the Bible talks and calls works of righteousness. Works of the law are usually ritual works ministered by the Spirit. Works of righteousness which we have done. These ones are the personal works, personal moral works. You see, even those ones accept you accept that this is the spirit working in you. This is grace of God working in you. If you don't do that, then you are still in the law. You are not yet under grace. And then, of course, there are princely works used in administration of justice uh, in the society. But the judges, the princes, and the magistrates, that is another matter. But when the Bible talks works of the law, our salvation from sin and our redemption of the spirit, you know, our reception of the spirit. They were not through undergoing any ritual. There's no ritual that brings salvation. There's no ritual that brings the spirit. Nobody performs anything on us that will bring salvation. Nobody performs anything on us that will bring the spirit. It is only when you hear the word of God and you believe. That's why it's called the word of faith. The word of faith when it is preached. Not, you know, when something is performed. No. St. Paul said the foolishness of preaching. Not the, the wisdom and philosophy of performing. That something has to happen by somebody performing something. No. Nothing needs to happen. Just preach and somebody believes. Everything will happen. We pray that God will help us. So that is what Christians do. Christians simply do not talk about performing of ritual works. They simply talk about preaching of the faithful word. And the victorious Christian, you know, living is, is not by receiving, you know, any ritual ministration, but by receiving the spiritual word, by hearing the word and receiving the, the spirit of the, the Holy Spirit of, the, of truth. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 2 to 9, he says, This only would I learn of you. Received you the Spirit by the works of the law? Did anybody perform any ritual on you before the Spirit came upon you? Or did you receive it by hearing of it? Somebody just preached the word and you just believed the word. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh that somebody has to? come and minister something to you before you become perfected? No. You believe the Lord and you walk with the Lord. That is how you get perfected. Somebody doesn't have to come and do a perfecting ministration on you. No. Nobody should take that, that, that boast. Only Christ would do And you have to believe straight in Christ and receive it straight from Christ. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it, is, if it be yet in vain, he therefore that minister to you the Spirit and the works miracles among you. It is Christ that ministers. It is Christ that works miracles. It is not any man that ministers the Spirit and miracles to you. It is Christ that ministers the Spirit and miracles to you. So he says, the person doing it Christ that is doing it, was he doing it by any ritual works? Was Christ doing any ritual of the law? That's what's called the works of the law. Is it how you, the, the, the Spirit was ministered to you? By any of those works of the law? Any of those ritual priestly ministrations? Or is it just by hearing the faith? Hearing of faith. You hear the word 
and you believe him. See, faith comes by hearing. So even as Abraham believed God, nobody ministered any righteousness of Abraham. Abraham just had the word of God and just believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know you therefore that they who are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the call of the gospel is to follow in what Abraham began. Verse 8 of that Romans chapter 3. Verse 8 now says, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, without sending any priest to minister anything to him. No ministration of any works, just hearing of faith. And God preached saying to Abraham, in you shall all nations be blessed. In other words, by doing what God and Abraham did, every nation will receive the blessing of eternal life. So then, they who are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Let us pray. I want you to talk to God at this hour and tell God, I look unto you. I'm not looking unto any man's ministration. I'm looking unto you, Christ. I want to hear your word and believe in you and believe in your word. I'm not looking for any man's ritual ministration. I'm only looking for hearing your word. Just somebody to tell me what you have said or show me where you have said it and I will go read it and hear it and believe it. Father, guide me to read your word and hear you speaking. That I will not read your word and hear myself speaking. Or read your word and hear another spirit speaking. I will not read your word and hear the world speaking. But I will read your word and hear you speaking. Father, may that be my portion. For it is the hearing of faith that brings the spirit. The hearing of faith that brings the quickening power of grace, the enabling power of grace to walk increasingly from grace to grace, from glory to glory, from faith to faith. May that be your portion, that as the world is crashing, you will be building up. When they say casting down, you'll be lifted up. When the enemy is covering everywhere with darkness, You will stay on top of the bushel with the light of God. May that be your portion. That nothing by enemies will drag you again to the bondage of sin. St. Paul says, sin shall not have dominion over you because you are under grace. Receive that grace that exercises dominion over iniquity. Dominion over devils. Dominion over depravity. Receive that grace. Believe the word of God. Hear and believe. And receive that quickening spirit. May that be your portion today. The Lord shall be your helper. In Jesus' name we pray. To God's gracious mercy and protection we commit all of you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be with you all and all yours, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.